Welcome, everybody. Um, obviously, we're very pleased with our win against Northwestern State University. We give Coach Laird and his staff and his players credit for coming out and uh, fighting very hard at the beginning of the football game. I thought he had an excellent game plan. But I want to give our team credit for fighting for 60 minutes. That's when we went to halftime and talked about that we're going to fight for 60 minutes, and uh, nobody panicked. I was pleased with our coaching staff. Uh, we stuck to the plan. Uh, we made some adjustments, especially on defense. Uh, give credit to Coach Aranda. We came back and made tight, played tighter coverage, and I thought we played uh, one heck of a second half. We're very pleased to see guys that catch the ball that usually didn't catch the ball, and Derek Dillon and Stephon Sullivan. We need to get them the ball. They're good players, along with the great players that we have. Pleased to see the uh, the returns, the punt returns with Derek Stanley and Trey Palmer. Uh, great schemes by Coach Mack, but you know those guys make some plays. So we're very pleased with uh, our return game, and we we hope to get better at it. Uh, Kate had the one miss. Uh, we talked to him about it. Uh, obviously, had to wait a little little while in the rush to start the play. He needs to get back, take time out, reset his thoughts, and uh, we need to train him to do that. But other than that, we we're very good on the special teams. When we looked at the film, we didn't play as good as some spots that we wanted to, especially on the offensive line and the defensive line. And some spots we didn't, we got to get fixed, and there's some fundamental stuff that we got to get fixed. So we get to get to tell the truth money today and to get those, those things fixed. And looking forward to that. Uh, looking forward to going to our first uh, SEC game on the road against Vanderbilt at 11 o'clock. We're going to be ready to play. Uh, we're going to go to bed early on Friday night. Uh, Tennessee and Nashville has been a great recruiting area for us and will continue to be a great recruiting area for us. Uh, Derek Mason has a lot of respect for myself. I think he's an excellent football coach. I knew him when he was at Stanford. Uh, we go to the SEC uh, coaching uh, meetings. He's one of the best guys there. He's easy to talk to. He's a good guy. He's very personal, and I wish him the very best. I think he's an excellent coach. On offense, they've gone to the spread. Uh, uh, they have some, a big time running back in Keyshawn Vaughn. The running back, he's probably going to be an NFL player. And also Jared Pinkney, tight end. Those two guys will play in the NFL. And Lipscon, who's from New Orleans, is a, is a good receiver for him. On defense, they're 4 2 5. Uh, they're giving up 36 points per game. Uh, Coach Mason's a defensive guy. I know he, he's had two weeks to prepare. I know he's going to have an excellent defensive uh, game plan against us. Uh, we're looking forward to getting on the road. We're looking forward to fixing ourselves this week. There's a lot of things to fix and a lot of things to be positive. I'm very pleased with the play of Joe Burrow. Uh, Joe, Joe made a couple of throws out there that you just go wild. You turn back the uh, film time and time again, so how did he do that? But tremendous athlete, tremendous touch, tremendous will to win. Uh, very pleased with... Uh, with the way Steve Enzaminga and Joe Brady is calling our offense. Uh, obviously, well, lights out right now on offense, throwing the football. We've got to get better running the football. We've got to get better up front on defense and stopping the run and playing our gaps. And we look forward to this week. Any questions? Coach, you kind of touched upon it, but how do you avoid kind of a sleepy start with that early time? And it may, this may be one of the smaller stadiums you've gone yeah. to, too. It won't be the big atmosphere, maybe. Yeah, yeah. well, we, uh, we're we going to work hard on it. I promise you that. We're going to go to bed early at 9 o'clock. We're going to get up. We have a, a call-out meeting at 7 o'clock, wake them up. We're going through the same uh, itinerary that we did against Louisville. So, uh, you know, we, we have our work cut out for us to get the guys going, uh, get them going early in the morning. We'll get it done. And down here in front, do you have any update on Todd Harris who got hurt on Saturday night? Yeah, Todd's going to be out for the year and uh, will not be back with us this year. And uh, hopefully we can use him as a redshirt. No, we will use this year as a redshirt year for him. Unfortunate. It was an unfortunate accident. His, uh, he just landed on the ground wrong. And well, I guess to go off that then, I mean, how do you imagine you guys go about kind of replacing him there? Well, you know, Jacoby Stevens is going to have to play a lot back there. You, know. you usually play three safeties a good amount, right? Yeah, that's right. Jacoby Stevens is going to play back there. Uh, you know, we have to wait to see the week as the week goes who else can fit back there. Yeah. Hey, Ed, um, one of the things that I heard in the post game from the players was that they weren't necessarily pleased with it either. They talked about a standard that they're trying right. to set and that, that they're trying to play to. 
how rewarding as a coaching staff is it to hear that? But then is it because they understand how good they can be that they're yeah. trying to reach this level? We talked about uh, at the beginning of the year setting the LSU standard of performance, the way we practice and the way we play. And obviously it's very high. I'll give you an example. On today, tell the truth, Monday we had on offense, one of the things we must and will improve is that we were only eight out of nine in the red zone scoring. And I said, well, isn't that action a little much? I said, well, no, Coach, we're supposed to be nine out of nine. So setting the LSU standard of performance is very high. Uh, our players have said it. Our coaches have said it. So we still have a ways to go in all areas. And uh, look out when we reach that standard of performance in all areas. I think we could be pretty good. Eddie, you're right. After the game, you talked about getting Chase and Hines reps at backup center. Yeah. Has, has anyone else taken snaps before or played center in high school that might be an option behind? No, that's it. That'd be Chase on. That'd be Chase on for us, to my knowledge. Yeah, Ed, right here. Do you have a, a update on Ed Ingram yet? Yeah, we, we're hearing very positive news. We have nothing official. I expect to know something uh, in the near future, in the next couple of days. And when I do hear something official, I'll better let you guys know officially. But everything we hear is be very positive, and we should hear something in the next couple of days. As, as far as you know, has he been working out? I mean, is, I mean, if he comes back, yes. how quickly can he, can he assimilate? Yes, he's going. Through, he's been through some workouts. Obviously, he's been working out on his own. He's going through some acclimatization stuff with with helmets on and stuff like that. So, when he does come back, uh, we'll be able to clear him, and we, he'll be ready to play. And then uh, any updates on, you know, Rashad Lawrence or Glenn Logan? Yeah, I don't think they'll be ready. Uh, is, is, is there any kind of timeline with those guys? Uh, not this week for sure. I don't think. Ed, down here. You, you're 3-0 and, and you talk about things you have to work on. Is this kind of a, as a coach, you kind of like this situation a little bit? you got things to get their attention, but yeah. yet you're having success. Just no. talk about that scenario that you find yourself in right yeah. now. You know, it's always good to, to be able to win and, and and look at the things that you must improve on. And the guys see it. Uh, you know, we've had some we had some experienced guys up front that didn't play very well. And uh, they know it. I talked to them about it today. So they're going to be hungrier this week. Uh, must improve. Again, the LSU standard of performance is very high. They understand it. I think they see it before I do sometimes, and uh, which is good. Head over here. A um, couple of things. The pass rush, do you think if it doesn't improve, that's the kind of thing that can catch up with you mm -hmm. in these games? And two, I know you've leaned on Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, a bunch. Mm -hmm. Is it just an experience factor mm -hmm. or, you know, like at Texas, he had the lion's share of the, of the mm -hmm. carries. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of explain what your thinking is there? Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny you mentioned that. Coach Robinson kind of gives me a state of the union, John Robinson, uh, every Monday morning. He's got about eight things for me. And they're very insightful, and I respect him, and I'm happy that I have him there. And, and most of them are very positive. But today it was like, hey, uh, we need to work those backs in quicker in significant roles, and he's right. Uh, I didn't want to put him in the Texas game because we had to go. I felt like we had to score every time, and I didn't want to fumble. And, I, and, and I'm not saying they would have fumbled, but I, I've, I've trusted that Clyde could do it. So, But we need to get these guys in more significant reps. We need to get them in a rotation that they played in the first quarter, the second quarter, so they can be more, uh, uh, more prepared to win in the heat of the battle. We can trust them to make the right play. Uh, the pass rush will cost us. Uh, we, we're, we're experimenting with different things. Uh, we did a better job of uh, mixing in our blitzes. Uh, we're going to have to blitz. Uh, we're not ready to use a four-man rush now with the guys that we have. Uh, we will use it, but uh, how effective we can be, we have to get better at it. So I think that you're going to see more blitzes, more, uh, more creative ways to get pass rush. And I think you saw that last Saturday. Hey, uh, down here. Um, yep. you, you said Saturday that it would take to watch film to kind of diagnose the, z the zone at coverage issues there. Just yeah. after after looking at it there, what's kind of your yeah. assessment on uh, some of the changes? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's more or less the thing I said, the pass rush wasn't there. 
uh, on the touchdown, we, we had a missed assignment. Not a missed alignment, just a missed assignment that a little bunch route. Uh, on some other plays, uh, there was still some technique stuff that we, we played wrong. Uh, we were playing too far off in the first half. We played a little bit tighter. Our guys broke on the ball. They batted some balls down. They broke some balls up. Should have got a couple of picks on a couple of balls. One of the things that I did mention that we disappointed in, we're even in the turnover ratio. That's not where we want to be. We're well, minus one in the turnover ratio this week. We need to get more picks. We need to get more turnovers. We had a turnover last game and a turnover the game before, and we're not getting enough turnovers. Coach, how pleased were you with Stephon Sullivan's production on Saturday? And after that, is he going to see increased usage yeah. from here on out? Yeah, we, we want to get Stephon the ball. And uh, he, he, deserve it. he deserves it. He's a good player. Uh, we talked about it after the Texas game. And uh, you can expect to see him, some at tight end, some at receiver, uh, have some uh, specific plays that he's going to catch the ball. So we, we're pleased with it. Ed, what is it that makes Derek Stingley so effective as a punt returner? And how long after he got to campus did y'all decide to use him in that role? How did he yeah. assert himself so quickly in that way? Yeah. He has vision. He has confidence. He's able to see the whole field. And uh, again, you know, we told him, said, Derek, wherever you see green grass, go. Uh, it's not like you got to go left or right. You don't want to limit him into where he can go because you never can. You never know when you catch the putt what's going to be open, the right, the left, or in the middle. So we ask our guys to block a certain way, let him find the green grass and let him go, and let him make plays. One thing that I do want him to do is protect the ball. Every once in a while it gets out a little bit. We need to keep it high and tight. Ed up here. Uh, Joe Burrow said something at the game. It's interesting that it's almost like the, the pass sets up the run now, which is kind of foreign to most people. Yeah. I know this offense is totally different. You, you prepared us for us all summer on that. Yeah. Uh, you had 488 pass and 122 rushing. No. Do you like? Is there a 50-50 mix so far in these first three games? You like where it is, but yeah. where it, where it's going rushing pass? Well, I'd like to be 50-50 as far as run pass, not the yardage as far as the calls. 50% run, 50% pass. We have to be balanced. We're gonna have. There's some at some point in time they're gonna stop our passing game. We have to run the football. But what, what's happening is we're so good at passing passing the football. It's kind of hard not to call the passing plays when they're wide open. So that's what you're seeing. We had some gap schemes that we put in were not very effective. Uh, we got beat at the line of scrimmage. And uh, for that, we're going to show our team that today, that uh, we had some one-on-ones on the offensive line that got beat. We got some one-on-ones on our defensive line that their offensive line beat them. And that should not happen. So those are some things we need to improve on. Hey, Ed, uh, right here. Uh, with Sadiq kind of being in and out of the lineup, how impressed have you been with uh, Dare Rosenthal and – uh, Bedora Trey are just kind of very, filling in. Very impressed. Uh, very impressed. Those guys have answered the bell. Uh, Dare has made tremendous improvement from moving from defense to offense every week. Uh, he's able to go in there and uh, he didn't give up a sack. He's doing a great job. I'm really impressed with Bedora Troy. Can play right tackle, can play guard. You're going to see him in the mix more. And uh, and if we do get Ed, Ed Ingram back and Sadiq back, we should be very solid up front. Hey, coach, over here. Uh, anything you want to say about the news on Drew Brees and maybe reflect on maybe that being a reminder for you guys in terms of getting Brennan some playing time? You know, first of all, when I, when I heard it, uh, I felt bad. I felt bad for him, his family, and the Saints in the state of Louisiana because I know how much he means to all of us. And um, I was talking to some quarterback recruits last night and to remind them that how much that they mean to their team, not in a selfish or boastful way, but the quarterback is the man, especially when he's a great one. So uh, I'm still going to have to remind Joe to run out of bounds. He ain't going to run out of bounds, but I'm about to remind him to do it. <laughs> and uh, Joe means a lot to our football team. Joe is becoming an elite quarterback. And I've been a part of three Heisman Trophy winners, Gino Toretta, Carson Palmer, and Matt Leiter. And I'm starting to see a lot of similarities, or maybe some things even better then I remember those guys doing it. So he can become that quarterback, still has a ways to go, but he's going to have to protect himself. Yeah, you, you're talking about Joe, and you mentioned some of those wow throws he was making. I mean, it seems like some of the throws he's making this year are just throws that I don't think we, we saw him able to make last year. I mean, how have you seen him just progress just purely as a as a passer? Yeah. Well, um, you know, last year when he, when he came in, I think he was unsure uh, of the offense. So uh, uh, he wasn't – 
letting the ball go as quick as he wanted to. Uh, he's improved his arm strength. He's in better condition this year. Uh, I think th he's able to extend plays with his feet, as you saw last week, and that's when he's really dangerous. And then again, the receivers that we have are not dropping the football. They're catching everything in the catch where it is that you could possibly imagine. So I think it's a combination of all those things. Coach, over here, when you, when you evaluate everything you're doing now, do you look and through the prism of, hey, we're, we're close to knocking on the door to where we want to be, and what do you think you have to do yeah. to get there? Because that's going to kind of reveal itself yeah. you know, in October and November. Yeah. We talked about that last night without saying it. <laughs> you know, you want to keep it one game at a time. You really look at your roster. You're really looking at evaluating your personnel. You're really seeing, hey, what can we do here? What can we do there? What can we do to get better? Pressing on, keep on pressing to get better and better and better and so we can make improvement throughout the year. I think that uh, a good football team, I know that a good football team, improves every week. And we've got to take the next step this week to get where we want to go. Obviously, we know what's coming down the road. There'll be some very strong opponents coming down the road. And, they, you know, we may, we may run into one in Vanderbilt. We ran one in, into one in Northwestern State for the first half. We have to overcome that. But we cannot do the things that we did against Northwestern State in the first half and get to where we want to, want to go. We have to improve. Coach, to your right. Uh, you alluded to your relationship or knowing Derek Mason. Would you elaborate a little bit maybe on when you, you were at SC, he was at Stanford, yeah. memorable games, and things you yeah. remember about him? Yeah, they had great defenses. I mean, they were an attack defense. Uh, I, th I do believe that they led the league in sacks uh, every year. Turnovers, they were ferocious. Uh, they were very multiple. They ran out of a 3-4. Uh, they were very hard to block, uh, very creative. Those are the things I remember about them. And Tough. Go ahead. After the game, you said that you weren't panicked, the team wasn't panicked, because you believe you have this trust in this offense that you guys are in every game. Has that had to um, trickle down to the way you coach or your coaches coach the team? Do you guys have to reset you know, a mindset, I guess, as far as maybe we don't need to press as hard as we might have in the past? Uh, you know, I, I, I do. I leave the offense up to Steve and Joe for the most part. And I put my two cents in every once in a while. but. You know, hey, why is this not working? What are we doing? But I do feel that we, the press that I'm feeling is from the defensive side, and we need to get better. And I know we will. And, and there's some things we got to get some guys healthy. We got to get killed about healthy. Uh, we got to stop making some mistakes that we're making. So the press that I'm feeling is to get the defense up to speed with the offense, so we can get to where we want to go. Coach, going back for a second, just talking about how you have to get Stephon Sullivan more involved, just how satisfying is it that you, you have that challenge with your offense to getting your running backs and your tight ends and your wide receivers, you know, an equal opportunity? Yeah. Well, that's what we always wanted, to have an offense that creates space, put our playmakers in space, and let them make plays, and have the quarterback that can make the decisions according to the coverage or have the coach we can look over and he can call the right play to put the ball in our guy's hands at the right spot. When you look at, when you watch our film, and I know you guys all do, I see you, I see your little, your little coaching points in your synopsis. I like that stuff. So, when, But you, there's a lot of times you see guys open, which is a sign of good coaching and good route running. So we have a combination of all those things. And, and, and at LSU, you deserve the very best. And I do believe that we're giving our guys the very best available. Coach, in the preseason, you said we've got to get pressure with four. Uh, that, that's a big – I know when you blitz, you yeah. don't want to do that because you expose yeah. yourself to, yeah. to stuff. Is that yeah. disappointing for you? I mean, Yeah, it I, is. Yeah, it is. It, it really is. And I'm not – we have some guys hurt. We're, we're, not, we're not getting where we want to go yet. I'm not saying that we can't get there. But uh, we're not where we need to be. Uh, Don, you mentioned the pass rush earlier. Um, Patrick Queen seems like he's kind of up in the middle on some of those green team yeah. packages. I mean, what, yeah. what's his role in that, and what have you seen from him this year? You know, that's, that's a package that Dave has come up with to, to dictate certain protections. And uh, once we dictate those certain protections, we can do a lot of things out of that. You're going to see that more. Sometimes we're sending them, sometimes we're not. But I think that when you, when you walk him up to the line of scrimmage, you dictate how they're going to block you, and then Dave can – Run his blitz patterns from that.
And he was he was one of those guys that was in a position battle throughout there. I mean, now he's on the field for y'all. I mean, what have yeah. you seen from Queen yeah. this year? Yeah. Excellent character. Uh, you know, some guys, uh, some guys, um, when when they don't get it their way, went into the transfer portal. They want to go. This guy came into my office and said, what can I do to get better? I'm going to play. I'm going to fight this thing out. Great example of that. Let's stick around. Hey, listen. Hey, we got a plan for you, son. It's going to happen. And now he's one of our best players on our team. Coach, I just run back up here. Um, uh, we know in the summer, Burrow talked about scoring the 40 and 50 and 60 points. Y'all hit all those numbers. Um, with recruiting, and I know you talked about leading up to the Texas game, uh, is there any story you can relay about some of the recruits, uh, their excitement level now that they've yeah. seen it, not only one week against Georgia Southern, but big time opponents there? Uh, I mean, 19 kids have caught a pass this year yeah. for you. It's, it, that broke a school record. Yeah. Well, see, so here's me texting a skilled player. Are you ready? Hey, this is Coach O. Can you call me? Bring. Hello. <laughs> As opposed to, hey, this is Coach O. Can you call me? Uh, no answer. There's high interest, and guys, guys are being noticed, you know, especially being on ESPN game days, being a, a national TV game like that, and having a quarterback do what he's doing. There, there's, there's, a, there's high interest across the country in, in our offense and, and come and play for the Tigers. There was always high interest. Now that we're playing great offense, there's even high interest. Coach, right here in the front. Uh, if Joe Burrow is doing well in the game, you don't want to make a change. But uh, is there a concerted effort to get Miles Brennan some reps in the event yeah. something were to happen? I mean, yeah. you know, packages and stuff. Yeah, yeah. We we practice him. We share some reps. Uh, we go ones versus twos, which is our first offense against their second defense. And uh, Joe gets seven reps, and Miles gets three, so we're training him. And Miles gets all the second team reps. Uh, Miles is eight or nine. And, uh, you know, we're working on gaining weight. He's getting better. Uh, we feel that if something would happen with Joe, then Miles will do fine. Is he Joe yet? No. But does he have a chance to be that good? We think he does. Coach, I, I know it's only September or whatever it is, but you mentioned the Heisman earlier. Um, do you think Joe is definitely in that conversation? And what would it take to him to be a super serious contender to get yeah. that? Well, we all know, uh, we all know the answer to that is uh, yes, he is, and he's that good. You have to win the big game. I think that you have to win the big game. You have to take us to the SEC championship and take us to the championship. And uh, not to say that you can't win it without it, but if you do those things, you got a good chance of winning. But, uh, who says we can do that? I don't know. But I've been a part of three national championship teams, and that, that was a big part of those guys winning the Heisman. I guarantee you that. Ed, you mentioned uh, needing to get Caleb on healthy. What's his status heading into the week? Questionable. Questionable. Hopefully, we can have him for this game. And if he is ready to play, we're going to play him. He's questionable. He's not able to practice today. We'll see it towards the end of the week. What about Thad Moss, Jamar Chase, uh, Divinity? They'll be ready to play.